So let's get started. So welcome. This is the last segment. Then the next break is the end of the day. So that's great. Um, my name is Teresa Liu. I've been teaching ultrasound for 15 years now. And so, yes, it's pattern recognition. It's a lot of, you know, practice, 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 reading, reading, reading. However, I do think that over the past 15 years, I learned a couple of things that if you learn some basic principles, that's much better to guide your practice and you will very quickly learn to see the pattern and be able to grow from there. And since we have a lot of novice here, let's start from the beginning. Now there's a couple of things that are high yield, I think, when you're looking at emergency ultrasound. And number one, it's there to help you do something, evaluate things that are common. And number two, it's there to help you evaluate people who are sick. So think about that as we go through the course today. So we're gonna learn about why we're doing these bedside ultrasound or how it can best help you, right? Uh, in this situation, today's course, we're gonna go through scenarios where ultrasound can really help you in the hypotensive patient or in the traumatically injured patient. And then we're, during the second part of this ultrasound session, we'll go over some basic views that will help you to evaluate your shortness of breath, your chest pain patients, as well as your critically sick patients. We're gonna go through what is fast. That's gonna take most of our 30 minutes here, go through what is not fast, okay, and then run through a case. So what is FAST? So FAST actually stands for Focus Abdominal Sonography in Trauma. That's how it's developed, is to evaluate for free fluid in a traumatic, traumatically injured patient. So what are we looking for? Someone comes in with in a trauma, we want to know if they're bleeding internally or not. So we're looking for free fluid. Well, it turns out that ultrasound can't really tell you what's blood, what's urine, or what's just ascites. It just tells you what's free fluid, okay? So that's the first thing. And guess what color is fluid in ultrasound? There is one way if you forget, you can always figure out, go to somebody who really has to pee, take a look at their pelvic area, and you're gonna see a big envelope of black space. And that tells you water, urine, blood, ascites, fluid is black, okay? And what we call black, sometimes you might read uh, radiology report, and you, you will get some ultrasound specific terminologies. Again, very simple, okay? Black is something that has no echo, which means that it's and echoic, right? That makes sense, right? We don't wanna to try to memorize, we wanna know what makes sense. So something that has zero echoes is an echoic, and that's your fluid. Something that has a lot of echoes is hyper echoic, and that's very wide on the screen, okay? So if you're lying down flat, I cut a hole on top of your belly, and I start pouring water, pouring in blood, pouring in urine, any liquid, it turns out that there's a couple of reliably dependent areas. So gravity, rule of physics, will apply anywhere on Earth. So if I pour water from the top, there's a few places where this fluid collects, and it's through this principle that we build our FAST exam, because we're looking at these dependent areas in your body to look for fluid, which is what color? Black or anechoic, right? So you guys got the coffee during break, excellent, okay? It turns out that there's three places that's dependent inside your abdominal cavity. One is the pelvic area, and then there's two areas in the upper quadrant. So we'll take a look at those. Okay. So this is a coronal view of the CAT scan of human body, right? And now I'm gonna tell you about the two upper quadrant areas where we look for fluid. The other, the other basic principle of ultrasound is that your ultrasound probe 
is like your flashlight that you shine into a black box. Only where the light shines do you see an image. So right now you see the two sets of eyeballs. That's where we're shining the light. And so you can see the arrows, right? So that means that over here on the right upper quadrant, I'm looking from the right side of that body right here and I'm looking in toward the middle of the body. And that's what this, this arrow is signaling. That means that the first thing my light beam shows is the skin. And the last thing, last thing I see is the spine. Does that make sense? Okay. So a, re, a quick review of anatomy. On the right side of the body, what's this big slab of organ meat right here? liver, right? And then going inferiorly and medially is your kidney, for which you have two, okay? Now notice the shape that we have over here, this triangle. So the first thing you see is gonna have a small footprint and then the image, uh, the image uh, picture will widen as you go down. So remember this picture, and you guys have the syllabus, so you can always compare, okay? Now on the left side, similarly, right? Now you're looking from this way, right? Here is your set of eyeballs. You're coming from the left side, looking into the middle of the body. The first thing, instead of liver, your counterpart here is your spleen, and then you have the kidney here. Well, it turns out that the dependent areas, number one on the right upper quadrant, is called the hepatorenal recess, okay, or called Morrison's pouch. So if I drip those water from the front of my belly back, Morrison's pouch is where the water will collect, and that's where we'll look for free fluid, right? If I drip that water, continue to drip, on the left upper quadrant, there's the splenorenal recess, right? Now, the caveat here is that some fluid can also flow under the diaphragm right here on the left side. But let's just talk about Morrison's pouch and splenorenal recess here. And I'm just talking about showing you where the dependent areas of the body is. Does that make sense so far? Okay, ready to get into ultrasound now? Okay, because so far that's the CAT scan. Here, <laughs> okay, let's take it one picture at a time. And you can refer back on your syllabus to the coronal picture of the CAT scan. Let's look at the right upper quadrant where there's liver and there's kidney. And let me take you through here. Remember that small line on top right by the lateral edge of the body right here? That's the first thing you see and therefore it's on top, right? Here's lateral, right? First thing you see is skin, sub-Q tissue, then all of a sudden you come across this bright white line, that's the peritoneum. So after this is inside the belly now. Then the first thing you hit, the first thing you see underneath the peritoneal stripe is the liver. And then as you look medially, then your eye gazes into the kidney. And then as you continue to go medially, in fact, here's your psoas muscle before you hit the spine, okay? I'm going through this slowly because it's important to understand the concept. The, when, your, when your ultrasound is coming this way, the first thing you see is my skin, then you're catching the liver, and then you're catching the kidney, right? And so the top is your skin, and then all the way on the bottom of the screen is your kidney. So then where is your Morrison's pouch? between the liver and the kidney. And that's the same red line we just drew on the CAT scan. 
Now let's, now we went through that slowly, let's go through this quickly. Now we're on the left side now, we're looking from outside in. We're going from left side looking toward the middle of the body. So again, you're gonna get some skin, some subcutaneous tissue. This line right here is your peritoneal stripe. After that, you have entered the belly. The first thing you see is this solid organ, which is the spleen. Okay, spleen is smaller than the liver. And then you're gonna hit the left kidney. That makes sense now, right? Now you see this picture, tell me where's the splenorenal recess? There. So, remember that person I opened up from the top and pouring in water? What does, if I, if I pour in water, pouring water, and now water starts to collect, what does that look like? That looks like instead of the red stripe, you're gonna see a black stripe growing as I continue to pour water or blood in there between the solid organs, liver, spleen, and the kidneys. That makes sense, right? So that's where you find fluid. Questions so far? Make sense so far? Now you guys feel like you're getting into it, you're becoming an expert? All right, all right. Now I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna throw a curveball because we just look at coronal views, and now I'm gonna switch orientation on you. Now we're gonna look at axial view of the CAT scan. So again, orientation. Here's the top. Here's your body, belly button is, and here's the bottom. Okay, that's your sacrum. You're lying on the bed here. So now we're looking anterior, posteriorly. First thing you see, belly button. Then you see some subcutaneous tissues, right? Then here, this is your bladder, okay? So similarly here, right? Your ultrasound now, you're shining that light bulb this way, right? The sound wave is traveling from the front of your body to the back. Right? So the first thing you see, little belly fat, okay, I admit, okay? Then the next thing you see is the bladder. And guess what? The bladder tells you what color is water. And echoic, right? So again, a review, your bladder shows that urine, blood, fluid is all black. Behind that is your uterus or your prostate, depending on the sex of the patient. And behind that, is poop, okay? <laughs> all right, here is where your rectum is, all right? So that pictures correlate and you make, it makes sense, right? That's the three dependent areas inside your abdomen, okay? Where do you see free fluid in this view? We may all remember learning in school, pouch of Douglas. Where's pouch of Douglas? posterior to the uterus before the rectum, so that's one area. But you would also look at the area behind or posterior to the bladder before your prostate or uterus, and here's your pouch of Douglas. So those are the dependent areas. We just went through all of them inside your belly. Your right upper quadrant in the Morrison's pouch your left upper quadrant in the splenorenal recess or above the spleen between the diaphragm. In your pelvic view, you're looking for behind the bladder, behind the uterus or prostate, okay? And you just recognize those pictures, correlating them to something you're already familiar with, which is your CT scans. So guess what? You can practice your ultrasound knowledge by reading your CT scans. Okay, keep reviewing your own images. Here are some normals, okay? So this first one, that's a right upper quadrant, right? Again, you're coming from right side of the body, getting a coronal picture. Here's this, what, what's this? Liver, what's this? Kidney, all right? And then see these? Lines, that's 
very similar to ribs, but not quite ribs, because ribs would be the first thing you see. What's the last thing you see that's also bone? Spine, right? So you're going to see the spines at the end. How about here? Here's your smaller than liver organ. That's on your left side. That's your spleen. And here is your kidney. Notice that the kidney has two different colors. And again, I just want to reinforce some of the basic principles. The more water you have in the tissue, the darker it is, right? Because water is an echoe without echoes. Well, kidney, you, as you know, will have your kidney cortex on the outside and the pyramids. That's very water rich. And in the middle, the renal pelvis, that's where you have the more fatty tissues, so then they're more brighter, okay? So basic principles. Now come down here, I haven't taught you guys this yet, but then the fourth view inside your FAST exam is to look around the heart. And you know that it's the heart because it's beating, okay? <laughs> Very few things move this way inside your body. So we're gonna go into that. So for the heart, you wanna know if there's free fluid. Where does free fluid in the heart collect? Pericardium, it's a sac that contains the heart, right? And then what's this, what's this thing right here? Bladder, right? Do you guys all feel like experts yet? Yeah, right? It's like, now it's like easy, right? Okay, I know I'm repeating myself now. Tell me collectively what's this? Liver, that's not collective, right? So tell me collectively, what's this? Kidney, thank you. Thank you, that's kidney. And so your hepatorenal recess or your Morrison's pouch is right here. Here's some probably mesenteric fat over there, but it's not black. It's not anechoic, so there's no free fluid there. Remember, just a little hint, these pictures are normals. <laughs> okay, now over here, I already told you it's the right side of the body, so what's this? Right side, <laughs> liver, <laughs> okay, spleens on the left side, and then you're going to see kidney, and you know, remember what I told you about the renal pyramids and all that stuff? So this is, this is like hypoechoic or less echoes, so it's like fluid rich, it's probably your renal pyramids. All right, here, let's, let's, let's go through this again. So what's this? Kidney, thank you. Now, this can be liver or spleen, okay? Now, we're going a little advanced now. This could be liver or spleen. Let me tell you why I think this one is a spleen. Guess what's in front of the spleen? Here's the spleen, what's in front of the spleen? It gets big every time I, goes to, uh, I go to the Chinese buffet or whatever, one of these, the biggest buffets. It's your stomach, right? So you're going to have a little bit of stomach here because as you are looking through here, you're catching a bit of a stomach. So if you see this hyperechoic, which is gas, okay, then that's part of your stomach. What's this right here? The bladder. Where do you look for free fluid? You mainly want to look behind it. You can also look around it, okay? You want to see if there's an echoic space outside of this envelope, okay? Ready for abnormals? Oh, not yet. One last one. Okay. So I, so far, I show you some still images. And guess what? That's two-dimensional. And guess what? We are three-dimensional beings. So there's no rule in the universe that would say that when you shine that, shine that you know, ultrasound beam into the body, the fluid has to be in that one plane. So what you have to do, or when you evaluate what somebody else gathered an image for you, is that you have to fan through that entire potential space. Okay, that means that you're not just taking one picture and say, good, we're done because the fluid can be hiding just in front of or just behind that one plane that you're looking at. Does that make sense? Remember your flashlight, right? 
I can only see what this light is catching. So I have to literally fan through that light to check out this side of this, the room and fan through that side. So then I can say, okay, there's no fluid here, but that, that, that doesn't help me. I need to see the entire space. Okay, I need to see through the entire 3D space. So often I tell my learners, it doesn't matter you show me the most beautiful picture in the world. You have to convince yourself when you're performing ultrasound or when you're interpreting ultrasound that the operator has scanned through the entire space, which is three-dimensional. Make sense? So these are some pictures of the fanning. So you can see here is the liver, here's the kidney, all right? And as you fan through, your, you're looking until the kidney disappears. So you're fanning anteriorly toward the front of the belly, fanning posteriorly. Same thing on the left side, right? And then guess what? Here, in the bladder, you fan superiorly toward the head, inferiorly toward the feet, and so you're gonna see this, uh, you know, this is uh, either uh, prostate or uterus come in and out because you're scanning through the entire space. Okay, okay, now we're ready for pathology. Oh, no, we're not, I lied. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the heart, okay? We're gonna go through it a little bit just so you know that you can see that it's beating and your pericardium is the covering of the entire heart. So it's highlighted in yellow here, okay? So that's where we would be looking for a stripe of black space if there's pericardial effusion, okay? Make sense? Not so fast. So when you're looking for free fluid, Generally, how much fluid do you need in order to be detectable by the FAST exam? 150 cc's. 150 cc as I drip that fluid down from the front of the belly to inside, about 150 cc's, you'll have about 85% sensitivity of detecting it. So that is to know that you should know that if somebody just started bleeding, you may not see it and maybe an hour later you go back and check on your patient, you repeat the fast because now they're collecting more fluid, okay? So serial fast exam can increase your sensitivity of detection of uh, free fluids. The other thing is it's not designed to detect solid organ injury, meaning if you have a liver lack, but the blood is not free flowing inside your belly, it's not sensitive to detect that. The study shows that in the hands of experts, you can probably detect solid organ injury. Expert can have 85% sensitivity, but all practitioners together, it's kind of like flipping a coin. You have 50-50, okay? So know that you do not rule out like grade one, grade two, grade three liver lags or splenic lags and whatnot. It's only for free fluid. And also, when do you use this? Well, in the place I practice, the CAT scan is across the hallway from my trauma bay. So the only reason I would do a fast exam in a trauma patient in this situation, only to detect free fluid but not solid organ injury, is if the patient is unstable and I need to know why right away. I can know why by saying, okay, whoa, there's free fluid in the belly, something is, something is like lacerated, let's go up to the OR. But if it's negative, is it a pelvic fracture? Is it some other causes of hypotension? Maybe, maybe interventional radiology is a better, better place for the patient to go. So it helps me triage. However, I know that not all of us practice in a place that CT is readily available like that. So in places that don't have CT as readily available, your, your, your fast indication grows, right? You do fast in a lot more patient scenarios. I think we mentioned this already. If there's hypotension and you want to do the fast to check for free fluid, it's not just blood, it can be, it, it certainly can be blood, like in your 
ruptured ectopic pregnancy in your ruptured triple A, but it can also be ruptured bladder. It can be lots of ascites, and that's not the reason for our hypotension. Maybe a patient has other reasons for like sepsis or whatnot, but they baseline just have ascites, okay? So know about all these caveats. Okay, now, do these look normal to you? Well, let's go through the same algorithm, right? The top is the skin, right? Then the, you see some sub tissue probably here. Then the next thing you should see is solid organ. But instead, what do you see here? An echoic space. That's free fluid. I don't even see kidneys. I know this is obviously positive. It's some black space surrounding my solid organ. How about this one? It's a little dark. Here's a little rib shadow, so there's a rib over there. So you get your, uh, you get your sub Q tissue, you get your peritoneal stripe here. Again, this space is occupied by something that's black before you get to your solid organ. And then between your solid organ and your kidney, there's more black space. These are huge amount of free fluid over here. Same thing here. Here's your peritoneal stripe. Here's your solid organ. The entire thing is enveloped by black fluid. This one is slightly subtle. You see the solid organ. You see the kidney here, some mesenteric fat. But you see here, that's blood. Good? OK. More. Now, it might be obvious to you here, but I'll tell you these cases are actually clinically subtle. And I think we point them out and select this particular clip so you can see it. But let's go through it. We got peritoneal stripe. We got some inferior tip of a solid organ. And then we mainly see this kidney. Well, the free fluid is at the end of this kidney, all the way inferiorly. You see that? How about here? This is a, the, a, a picture that the first picture we saw, there was nothing. But as you fan posteriorly, you start seeing that subtle black space between the solid organ and the kidney. Here, this is most commonly misplaced. The inferior tip of the liver, that's the only place you got this black space. OK, so that's subtle. Now this one. Subtle or obvious? So here's the, kin uh, here's the liver, and here's kidney, and you see free fluid. But again, unless you move your ultrasound beam all the way down to the inferior edge of the liver or the kidney, you can miss this pocket right here. Because so far, the normals I show you, you get a big piece of liver, right? So again, that's another reason why you interrogate through the entire space, okay? And not just one picture, one beautiful view of right upper quadrant, you're like, I'm done. No, you got to make sure that you look through the entire space. More positives? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds to look at this and tell me if you can find all the positives. There is one spot that's positive per panel. And now I'm going to point them out. Hepato reno, right? Liver, kidney, and here's the black space. Hepato reno, black space. Bladder, there's that black space outside. Bladder, now there's a space outside. Okay, this is not it. Why is this not it? Because this came from all the way up top. So that's a shadowing, whereas you can see there's other tissue over here, and all of a sudden that's black. Now, just because you see black space, it means there's fluid, but you want to fan through to make sure it's not just an iliac vessel, for example. Okay. Okay. All right. So 
here we got a 35-year-old gentleman, all right? He was street racing. He totaled his car, all right? And you're doing your trauma survey. The patient's, you know, vitals comes in. He's tacky to 110. His blood pressure is 100 over 70, borderline, okay? And he is very tender, right? And as you push on the pelvis, he's super tender. So now you're thinking, wow, I'm a little worried that this person has pelvic fracture, okay? But you do a fast exam, and what do you see here? So here is the free fluid, and here as you fan through, right, right now, by the way, there's the stomach, so this is the left side. It's gonna come as you fan, there's the stomach. So he also had a couple of beers there because you see the fluid, right? The stomach instead of full of gas is full of liquid, right? And then here's your kidney, but look, when you fan through, you see that subtle tip. There's free fluid there. And then here, he's full of bladder and actually there's a, blad there's a urine jet right there, okay? It's just his kidney doing its job. It's emptying into, into the bladder. Did I mention beer? Right? Okay, so, so what do you do with this patient? Well, this is where the fast is helpful, right? Because you might think the patient has pelvic fracture and should go into interventional radiology. But if this patient has also got tons of fluid in their belly, more than 150 cc's, right? on arrival, it's only gonna bleed more. Then you need to coordinate both the surgeons to go to the OR, as well as calling the interventional radiology and say you might wanna work on that pelvic fracture later after the first thing is fixed. So this is some of the situations where, I mean, this is a little bit of an advanced case, honestly. I could have just told you, hypotensive, you see this, go straight to OR, right? And that's, that's kind of where, where this is helpful. The traditional FAST exam in a, in a country like United States, okay, in a trauma center is hypotensive, positive FAST, go straight to OR, do not stop by CAT scan, okay? Because you already know that patient is unstable. They're not stable for that CAT scan. They need to get this fixed, okay? Any questions? Yes, so remember where you put the pelvic blinder is over the trochanter, right? So the place to do your pelvic ultrasound is just superior to your pubic symphysis, all right? And then the other thing is because you got the flashlight, you don't have to be right over the top. Let's say it's right here, but let's say that area is binded. You can start from higher, just look down. So your angle of ultrasound would be this way, right? Like this way. If you go lower, your angle of ultrasound might be flat in. So you can, tr I mean, it might be limited, right? But you can still do it. Any other questions? Okay. Well, we're gonna have another session to further consolidate some of these knowledge, but I hope that this is a good intro and uh, let's move on to the next session.